Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1980s. Never stray from the path. Never eat a windfall apple. And never trust a man whose eyebrows meet. This is episode 226, recorded February 8th, 2023. Mm. Gruesome Magazine. I no longer have actual eyebrows, so. You know. <laughs> so they may actually meet. Is just that uh, right. That's right. It could be a trick. All right. Uh, my name is Jeff Moore, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1980 and 1989. Each episode, my co-host Bill Mulligan, Crystal Cleveland, and Chad Hunt, and I will tackle another classic. We're not so classic mm-hmm. film from this radical, gory, influential, and gruesome decade. Yep. Woo, woo. Uh, anyway, we have good news. Uh, you know, decades before the classic era has been partnering with Play Now Media, and all of their episodes were on their streaming channels, classic horror movie channels, sci-fi, uh, classic sci-fi movie channel, and the Wicked Horror TV channel. Well, now... Decades before the 70s and the 80s yeah. will be on uh, several other channels. I'm not, I, I, I'm pretty sure they're all going to be on Wicked Horror TV. Uh, there's another one that they're trying to get the kinks out of the app called Retro Horror, which is 70s, oh, 80s, cool. and 90s. Yeah, good. And then there's a free horror movie channel and a free classic horror movie channel. So you can't. Mm. Everything on there will have ads, kind of like Tubi. Um, so check those out. I looked the other day, and there was only one up, but I, I, I think he told me I had given him eight episodes of each, the last eight episodes, so I thought they were all going to go up at once. So I'll check back with him. Uh, but by the time you all see this, I think it will probably be happening. Cool. So I'm excited. Hey, excellent. Yep. <laughs> all righty <dighty. laughs> Yeah, They're good streaming channels. He's got streaming channels for everything. If you have a genre you like, he's got a streaming channel. And if you don't see one, let him know what he's missing. And, uh, <laughs> I think they're upwards around 25 or 30 different wow. uh, theme channels now. Hey, Chad, good news. Nunsploitation, huh? Oh. Oh, boy. Ooh. Oh, there's, <laughs> there's, there's multiple exploitation channels on there. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Uh, so on this podcast... We start out by giving some basic details of the film we're covering, followed by our first impressions of the movie, taglines, and then we move into kind of a general discussion. Uh, but first up, my incredible crew mates. <laughs> crew I was going to say crew crew mates, but it just didn't quite come out right. Uh, this is my ship. Mm-hmm. Wow. First up is Crystal Cleveland, the Living Dead Girl, and co-host of the Gruesome Magazine podcast. Good to see you, Crystal. Good to see you, too. How's it going? It is going great. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I can't complain. It's it's February already, so that's yeah. exciting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is why I'm this not This year is denying. going, I know, this year is going by super fast. <laughs> Scary. So anyway. Yay. Uh, also with us is Chad Hunt, comic book artist and co-host of Decades of War, the classic era and the 70s. And, you know, he does lots of other stuff, too. <laughs> How you doing, Chad? <laughs> Way to make Most... it sound so exciting. <laughs> yeah. Most of which, uh... what do you mean? Gets up, he goes to bed, he eats. <laughs> he brushes his teeth twice a week. Yeah. You make Chad's life sound more exciting than it really is. <laughs> well, thanks for the that. Exciting, a lot of the exciting life of a certified public accountant. Mm-hmm. Oh, weird. Um, oh. So good to see you, bud. Thank you. It's good to be here. Uh, and uh, despite all the the snow and bad weather we're having, and are you having snow? Really? N- no. Oh. No. Okay. <laughs> I was like, nothing. wow, cool. That's a weather report. That's what we usually do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, and special effects guru, co-host of Decades for the 1970s. Bill, how are you? I'm doing all right. You know, I'm checking to see. I don't know if Gizzy has eyebrows. If he, well, you know, he doesn't because he's a sphinx. But if he did, they might meet together. And I don't know. Now we have some interesting look- feedback at the end of today's show. Oh, so really? Oh, stay okay. tuned. 
one of probably one about of your them. cat, I guess. Oh, yeah. one of them. I'm yeah. sure he's yeah. got a bigger fan club than I ever will. So, uh, the cat's beautiful. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. a good boy. yeah, and sure everybody, please, uh, please be sure to subscribe. You know, we're oh, trying yeah. to build our fan base. You can make suggestions, criticisms, uh, your experience with these movies, stuff we missed, mm-hmm. et cetera. Yeah. Or, you know. Okay. We love so that stupid <laughs> jet to get some hair or something. What? No. What? Yeah. Anyway. Uh-huh. Um, all right. So, the movie. The movie. This episode is The Company of Wolves. 1984, directed by Neil Jordan, written by Angela Carter and Neil Jordan. And I believe there was a uh, collection of stories that Mm -hmm. was the basis Mm -hmm. for this by Angela Carter. So uh, cast, the cast includes Sarah Patterson, Angela Lansbury, David Warner. I don't know whether to say Tuss or Tussie, Silberg, Mika Bergis, Stephen Ray, and Brian Glover. The production company is ITC, Incorporated Television Company, and Palace Pictures. Filming locations, Shepperton Studios and Victoria Cross, UK. Uh, filming dates, well, I saw a thing that said it started January 9th, 1984, and another one that said it took nine weeks to film it. So there you have it. Nine days? Whoo. Weeks. weeks. Oh, weeks. nine Sorry. weeks. Okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah. I was like, wow. Um. Release dates. Well, this is a little iffy, too. Um, It was released in L.A. at Filmex on July 10th, 1984, and at TIFF, Toronto International Film Festival, in uh, September 15th, 1984, in the U.K., September 21st, 1984, and finally in the U.S., April 19th, 1985. Hmm. Not real sure why that took so long. It took a long time, yeah. Yeah. Uh, The budget estimated to be $2 million. Domestic box office, which I love it when all the sources say the same thing. $4.4 million. That's the domestic box office. Now, that's Canada and the U.S., so uh, I'm sure it made much more money in Europe. AKAs, this has lots of titles, and they all have wolves in the title, but I kind of like them. The Zeit der Wolfe, in Germany, The Time of the Wolves. Venis, Venis, Nat, I'm not real sure. Danish, Night of the Wolves. Hmm. And I'm, I'm going to mess this one up. Lobos, Lobos Creatures del Diablo. There we go. Creatures, mm-hmm. uh, wolves, Creatures of the Devil. And finally. That's nice, actually. <laughs> Largen Kammer from Sweden, The Wolf is Coming. So lots of wolves, but that's, you know, they're devils, they're coming, they're in the night, it's the time, whatever. Uh, The synopsis, a teenage girl in a country manor falls asleep while reading a magazine and has a disturbing dream involving wolves prowling the woods below her bedroom window. Well, it's a little more than that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's <laughs> a terrible synopsis. I don't know why they come, how they come up with these, but uh, and that's a picture of a wolf that just happened to, uh, I think, eat a cow. Yeah, eat a cow. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty, pretty wolf. Yeah. Now, is that one know. of the real wolves? I know there were. Only I don't know. Wolves. I don't know. We'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that. I'm sure. So we have this this first timer, uh, Sarah Patterson with an incredible backup cast, basically. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the Huntsman is also a first-timer, but uh, once again, we'll, we'll kind of get to that. Um, but first, I think we need to do taglines with Chad. <laughs> oh, things are jumping. I wish we had that. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> You should have played I, Bark at the Moon by Ozzy. Yeah. Red yeah. Red and good. Well, they would have. They would have. Yeah, we would have got nailed. But they yeah. copyrighted that one. Um, but yeah, I should have got a wolf howl. I don't know. I just, oh no! My brain shuts off in. Uh, little Warren Zevon, maybe. So anyway. I love that art. Yeah, that's um, that's awesome art. 
We we noted we saw it last time, Chad, but oh, you weren't okay. here, so yeah. we weren't able to. Yeah. Oh yeah, so you guys had yeah. I said to Chad. Chad mm -hmm. did that. Cool. Okay. Nice. All right. So taglines for this one. That's just fumbles his way around here. Okay. Shall <laughs> I? Yes. Shall I proceed? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Taglines for the company of wolves are as follows. Number one, within the forest are strangers lying in wait for innocence. Who's okay. straight from the path? Okay. Okay. That's for that's the Austria Australia the actual. Should I read it in an Australian accent? Oh. Lime. Where fairy stories meet horror stories. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. A furry tale for grown-ups. Oh Get my it. gosh! Mm. Actually, yes. that is better now than it ever was back then. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah. that's Chad's favorite. Yeah. He yeah. likes it's, the furries. It's, it's a yeah. good one. Yeah, I do. That's hey, wait funny. a minute. What? That's so okay. funny. All right. The next one, the film event of the year. Okay. Whatever. Disney's yeah. Company of Wolves. Okay. Uh, the desire, the fantasy, the nightmare. Okay. I mean, yeah, I guess. guess. Kind of sounds like an Emmanuel movie. It does. Yeah. It does. <laughs> In the Company of Emmanuel. Yeah. In the dead of the night, the beast is unleashed. Okay. That, that, Man. It's so generic. These yeah. are, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Last one. Thank gosh. The company of wolves. They're all the company we keep, even in our dreams. Okay. That's that's terrible. It's horrible. Yeah. yeah. Not, terrible. not good. I like a furry tale for grown-ups, and I'll spin by that one. Yeah. 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 And that's been Taglines with Chad. <laughs> <laughs> That'll That's never so not boring. be funny. <laughs> I almost had to thrash my brother. He was telling me a while watching Creature with the Black Lagoon and what a silly, terrible movie it was, and I was just oh, ready to. That's that's worth a thrashing. Well, they're so slow, and I said, oh, "Give me a break." So's the Mummy. So's Frankenstein. Yeah. So, <laughs> so's anyway. So it's not that so slow is, if you're underwater. It, so is the Living Dead on uh, uh, the Walking Dead. Tour of the Walking Dead on Walking right. Dead. So anyway, so is a great white shark on land. But if you're in water, he's pretty much got your ass. Well, uh, let's get to first impressions. And I'm curious as to if someone can really nail this down because we we start out in somewhat present day, and this mm. girl has a dream, and then her grandmother tells her tales. She tells some tales. Other stuff happens, and I, mm. I, I don't know. I at the end, she wakes up from the dream. I guess. Or does she? Or does she? I don't know. This one mm. is it was not Bill's my pick, pick, but yeah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll go. Wow. I was like, I'll go, uh, but and the entire <laughs> audience is like, oh, oh no. Mm -mm. <laughs> um, so yeah, this was my pick largely because I hadn't seen it, and it's just one of those films I was certainly aware of, and. and I remember seeing all the pictures in Fangoria and the, the great shot of the wolf coming through the guy's mouth, which I think is an, still think is an awesome mm -hmm. way to do this. Uh, but I'd never actually seen it. I don't know why. It just slipped through the cracks. And this is not my favorite kind of film. I, I, I tend to like films with a strong narrative. And this is very random. It's, it's a bunch of stories that don't necessarily have any connection to each other, uh -huh. just variations of a sure? theme. Well, uh -huh. no, probably not. I mean, <laughs> you know, this is why I got to listen to you guys, but you know, it just, it feels like what I think I I'm, I'm under the impression that the book that it was based on was a series of different stories with werewolves as a theme. So, um, I mean the, you know, the obvious message, you know, men, yes. men can be awful. Um, Certainly yep. one that resonates, especially in the that time period. Although I don't know what time period it really is, and it kind of goes back and forth. I didn't I didn't particularly get the the need for the opening set in the present time and you know but it's beautiful to look at. It's got amazing set design. It's well photographed. The guy who did this, who I I keep mixing him up with Neil Marshall, but he's not, he's Neil Jordan. 
did um, Interview with a Vampire, beautiful film, gorgeous film, and did one, um, when we get to the, the picture with him, uh, Byzantium, Byzantinium, I don't know. Uh, it's a great vampire movie that no one seems to have Byzantium. heard of. The Byzantium, yeah. He's really good. He's a, he's a really solid director and knows how to uh, work a good cast, which he certainly got here. They weren't paid much, but he got a, he got a really good cast. So it's 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 an interesting film. Um, but like I say, it's not particularly my thing. But it, it's it's probably one of the better fairy tale inspired films because it is like a fairy tale. They're usually not feature length fairy tales. They're usually kind of brief, and the stories in here are pretty brief. And there's a lot of them. So uh, definitely worth watching. But. Um, you know, I just I just preferred a, a strong narrative, you know, following people from one thing to the other. I will say this watching it. I had no idea where it was going or what the next thing was going to be or. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. All right. Well, Crystal, how about you? Okay. When did you first see this? And when I was impression? young, I don't remember when, but so when I was young, I did. I just watched it and thought, okay, it's an anthology about werewolves, but obviously, and the time is important. Men haven't changed. This is look, guys. I, I guess I'm. I'm like it's so obvious. I mean, literally, even the grandmother says. A man will be all sweet and kind until he gets what he wants, and it's so. I, I'm sorry, but that's just true. It's just. It's so. It's just. It's basically like they're wolf in sheep's clothing, essentially. I mean, and look at like every. Literally, every one of the stories is about that. Is about how mm -hmm. the men are trying to get in the girl's pants, and the the women not being in control of their sexuality. I think I don't necessarily think it's like all about downing men, but let's be real. I mean, if you talk to any woman, I think more times than not, we've dealt with that yeah. than someone who's actually a decent. <laughs> I hate to say it. I mean, yeah. we can, you know, I'm uh, incels would just love me right now, just being like, <laughs> oh, um, you women, blah blah blah. Yeah, you know, yeah. but let's come on. I yeah. mean, the I'll reality those, is what it is. All those people have eyebrows that come together. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Oh, uh, wait, wait, yeah. But so that really is the theme of this. Um, it it's interesting because I think, like I said, with the timing, I think it's like it's it's the same in the present or the past. It's always kind of been this way. At least in now, women have more of a choice. Whereas back then, I mean, like you see when when the woman gets. So her, you know, when the husband kills the ex and then he slaps her, yeah, you know, it's like, well, I wouldn't let a man. And she's like, well, you know, don't, you know, you'd be surprised at what, yeah, yeah. it's, it, so it's, it's kind of nice. I didn't recognize that I was a kid, mm -hmm. um, sure. but I had seen it again, you know, as an adult, not several years ago and i was like oh it's so obvious you know what what it is i mean obviously it was written by a woman mainly the stories not the wraparound i guess he probably wrote that which is fine um maybe that's why he put it in the present and the past i don't know now i do think i do think it doesn't matter if she's awake or not at the end that's the point it's like all these all these wolves come knocking at your door and they just like barge their way in whether you like it or not um but Ooh. yes it's shot really well i there's not a lot of gore um but what what gore there is and the transformations there are are i think exquisite i i uh i love them that first one with the x i think lasted so long i loved how it was like and it seemed so painful and mm -hmm. i love the wolf coming out of the mouth so if you saw hemlock grove they kind of took a same they sort did of, they did yeah, yeah they kind of took a same sort of i i love werewolf movies They're, if if i'm being honest i can't decide whether i prefer werewolf movies or vampire films if honestly i probably prefer the werewolves when they're really good it's just i think right. the werewolves tend to be be worse because and that's worse. why i've never made a werewolf movie yeah. I, i'd make nothing but werewolf movies if i had confidence <sighs> in my ability so to make awesome. a good werewolf yeah because i do think 
it's such a good metaphor for what's inside mm -hmm. of anybody not just men i mean anybody i think we all have that inside of us so you know it's liable to come out every once in a while but yes it's shot beautifully i think this is definitely one oh yeah why don't they why don't we use dame angela lansbury why don't we use her title like is there a reason or are we mm. not or does it matter or what no, i mean no real reason because okay. we fought a revolution not to call him sir ian mcclellan or anything oh, okay because i wasn't sure because sometimes they do and then sometimes they yeah. don't and i wasn't sure if that was like a thing or not i don't care i mean whatever we're in america so it's fine That's right. but um i i love angela Land. actually she just passed away too i know last she did, year did. And, and we all loved her she was great yeah um i I still love this movie. I still think it holds up. Um, I think the whole feel of the the little town and everything is cool. I mean, if you really look at it, there's such small, tiny sets, and there's not much to it, yeah. but it works, and it makes it, for some reason, it feels bigger than what it is. Like, when the whole party changes, it's so creepy. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Like, But, yeah, so I love this movie. I still love it, and I think it's great. If I had a daughter, I would totally have her watch it. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. I'd be telling her, see, I want yep. you to you mm -hmm. be telling her what the meaning it is, too. Yep, I'm like, yeah. mm hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And now, Chad, how about you? Have you seen this before? And uh, yeah, I saw this in the movie theater when it first came out and um, hated it. I, I just, I, I, I really it, yeah. hated it. Um, Probably because I didn't get at the time what the movie was trying to say. Um, I was there for the werewolves tra transforming, and I was at that, you know, that was a, at the height of horror at the time. And, and werewolf transformations were, you know, you had American Werewolf, The Howling, and, and stuff like that. And so you see a movie where it's advertising this wolf coming out of this guy's mouth yeah. and his face. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you got to go see it. So that, that, that's all I was there for when I first saw it and hated it. I just didn't like that. I didn't understand the bookends of the of the girl um, sleeping. And this was a dream. Why? Why did it have to be a dream? Why could why didn't it just happen at the time period um, that they were shooting? And. Um, but um, and the transformations were awesome. Uh, especially that first that first one where the guy just rips his whole face mm -hmm. and skin off and everything that was that was cool and and everything um watching it this time i haven't watched it since since then so i watched it uh, watching it this time i kind of understand now where they were going with it uh with some of those stories and everything um i found it um even though I understood what they were doing, I still found it a little, it's a weird film. Yeah. There's a lot of weird <laughs> shit going on in here. Yeah. Um, a lot of stuff mm. being shown to you that it represents something, but you don't really know what it is. Like the, the, the nest with the bird eggs that cracks open and there's little baby statues in it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, there's, that's just, it's got a lot of weird stuff. And, and I guess that's because of the fantasy element. I, I'm, I'm assuming, but um, um, it's still not one that I go back and revisit a lot because I just, it. I like it. I understand what the movie's saying, but I, I think I'm a little like um, Bill. I, I like uh, more of a narrative. Um, and the, the stories weren't all that well done, I would say. Um, if they were trying to do like an anthology type, movie uh the back and forth jumping back and forth in time and everything kind of muddled all that and um the the end was kind of confusing i don't know if that meant um with the wolves sort of seeping into reality into the real world not the dream world that it was maybe the end of her innocence or something I, I, I don't know, know. Mm -hmm. yeah and so I, I kind of understood it a little bit more, bit, little bit more this time, but um, yeah, there's, I still, I don't know, I'm on the fence about it uh, as far as, it's not one I'm going to go watch again anytime soon. Uh, so, but it's a good, it's a good movie. 
it really is a good movie. It's just um, like Bill said, it's not my kind of my kind of thing, I guess. You know, it's funny every time every time I say about a movie, oh, you know, what I really like is a narrative thing. There's a little voice in my head that says, isn't your all time favorite movie Suspiria, which has absolutely <laughs> no narrative theme? You know, just is just a bunch of random images. I'm like, shut up, little voice in my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, I'm I'm with Bill. I hadn't seen this before, uh, and I think I'm, there's a shot coming up later that is what I saw on like the video box or something, which is why I didn't rent it before. Me being closed minded, so uh, I enjoy this, but I think it's it's odd structure is uh, the stories and what happens and the logic in in them are far more akin to fairy tales than any other type of structure or logic or why stuff happened. And it's just like Chad was saying, these little babies in the eggs. Then she takes one, shows it to her mom, and her mom's, oh. Uh, you know, yeah. Like, like, I, she's, pre- like, but, like okay. she's telling her she's pregnant. Yeah. Is she? Okay. Um, interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, it was a stork's nest. Uh, so uh, anyway, um, but but – I liked I liked the uh, lead character Sarah Patterson. I thought she was good. I thought the guy yeah. that played the huntsman was incredible. Mm-hmm. He was really good, and apparently he wasn't really even. He was hired to help Stephen Ree with his choreography and movements to seem more wolf like, and they liked him so much they they put him in. Um, so anyway. Uh, and Brian Glover is always awesome. I don't know. Um, we don't. I don't think we have a slide of him, but you recognize him immediately. He's the the amorous boy's father. <laughs> okay, yeah, so, yeah. Um, he's in. He's in all kinds of stuff. So anyway, um, I think I'll stop there. But I enjoyed it. I'm glad I watched it. I like the transformations. They're the, they're the of the. There's the kind where. It's actually there's the kind where there's like literally the the they change you know like in mm-hmm. I think American Werewolf in London you know where their mouth starts you know it's like mm-hmm. you see their body actually yeah. morphing and then there's this other kind of process where they like burst out of their skin you know like they're I, and that's yeah. what this follows a lot more and I, I I don't know I really enjoyed it I thought it was icky it was icky. That snout comes out of his mouth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So anyway, um, all right. Let's move on to some of the stuff. Bill has supplied some things here. So anytime you think of something, you know, you guys just pop in, and this is pretty much the poster. Yeah. There are a few variations, but that's mm-hmm. and that yeah. that is far better than the uh, gives you a far better idea what this is about than the taglines. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, we got we Little just, Red Riding Hood and we have yep. clearly a man turning mm-hmm. into a wolf here. So, yeah, that gives you a fairly good sense of what the movie's about. Yeah, the tagline oh, yeah. sure don't. We got a full moon there. You know. Yeah. Now, I do think probably people might have gone into this expecting more of American Werewolf or Howling or even mm, Wolfen fair. Yeah. than what they got. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough one to nec- to describe. Well, and it was a a flurry of those movies, right? Yeah. Although um, it looks like it did make money, it, thank yeah, you, yeah. because it didn't cost much. You know that 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 had well, a big advantage. It didn't make a lot of money, but it didn't cost a lot of money, so it probably did it all right. And in fact, I saw uh, some information where uh, the original script had the wolf at the end <laughs> swallowing up Sarah. And, oh, that makes a lot of sense to me, uh, actually. The, uh, the, uh, but they didn't do it because it, it was going to cost too much, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everybody liked it, but yep, can't do that one. So. Metaphorically, that makes a lot of sense. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, you know, there's you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in here, but it's pretty straightforward. Like the baby that, yes, I understand this. It just was still weird. It just mm-hmm. seemed weird. This, And then... Uh, the uh the uh the, the cross you know the wolf had the 
had her mm-hmm. cross on so the mother knew. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway. And the mother seemed okay with her turning into a wolf, which, you know, I interpreted as, okay, so she's now a wolf. She's part of the pack. She's free. And nobody back then was really free, and, and women even less so. Mm-hmm. so you know. Well, I think that the reason because because she became she was enjoying herself she had come into her sexual she was actually part of it instead of being the victim yeah Mm -hmm. do you see like so that of course that's Mm -hmm. why her mother would be happy because it's like oh you're actually like you know you're you're happy you're where you're enjoying Mm-hmm. whatever you know whatever the innuendos are there mm. <laughs> you know i mean <laughs> you know what i mean like i think so yeah so i mean because you know back at that in that time once again like we were talking about it could be so much worse for you know yeah. that woman so i think the mom was like oh good you know that's that was my take of it i mean right. i could mm. be yeah, totally yeah, wrong yeah. but i'm not wrong <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like i could be but i'm not i mean it yeah, makes no, it, I, right. and i totally get why y'all would not like it as much i mean it is it's it's kind of weird it's that de- well it's definitely weird i get that it's super weird and i i i i'm shocked though like how much i totally did not get as a kid i right. liked weird stuff as a kid so i guess it makes sense that i still liked it because mm-hmm. i was like Okay. Well, you took it for face Whatever. value when you were a Yeah, kid. yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's got right. enough yeah. stuff there that you can take at face value. You don't mm-hmm. necessarily need to see the underlying things. Yeah. I will never forget the baby, though, when I was a kid. And I was like, oh, yeah. cool. She found a baby doll. I mean. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> what? Okay. That's what, that's what so Dad was thinking. Silly. Now. <laughs> you know, it's so silly. Yeah. But that's, mm-hmm. that's a cool thing. That's one of the things I like about fairy tales is that there are these little small details that aren't necessarily essential to the plot but they just they kind of add to the overall fantasy quality mm. of it. it's just those little okay what's going on stop <laughs> i thought i was wondering what that was Jeez. you're like, talking I'm about sure. wolves and we don't like yeah them. oh yeah. my god mm-hmm. canines Cats All right. have the zoom betrayal in. so the the director is neil jordan um which that is not neil jordan no that was this is neil jordan Byzantium. Byzantium, oh. which I really want to put a word out for because I don't think anyone knows about it. It's a it's, I, a, it's I, very much if you liked if you liked Company of Wolves, I think you'll like this. It's it's a very female centric vampire. Mm-hmm. I don't think and I've ever it's, seen it. It's gorgeously it's pretty made. Recent. Yeah. Yeah. A, a, a great acting. The sort of thing I wish there were a sequel because it, it, you know it has a, an interesting take on vampires. And I mean anything if there's anything that's been done to death, it's vampires. But I really enjoyed it, and I mentioned it to people, and they're like, "Of course, it would help if I could remember how to pronounce the title." Well, I I watched it once, and I'm not even sure if I watched the whole thing. I had to be in the right. I think it's one of those movies you got to be in the right. Yeah, it's 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 a a, slow burn. And they, but they he's he's a, an, an interview interview, slow burn, but. interview with a vampire. I mean, people love it, hate it, mm-hmm. whatever. I um, love it. Mm-hmm. They they think it was miscast. I disagree with all that. I think it's, it's scrumptious. Yeah, really, really well done. I'm surprised. And um, and I was surprised that there wasn't really a follow up. I don't include Queen of the Damned, which I I, I loved Queen of the Damned. Oh, I couldn't stand it. I, I, I saw it. it with my girls. Um, I don't know. I, I just. Mm. I wanted to see more of these guys, these two. And I have not seen the TV show, which people tell me is is good. Oh, I would like to see that, too. Yeah. I, I love, I, I've read most, well, I read a lot of the older Anne Rice books. So, I mean, the newer, the new, new newer stuff I haven't mm-hmm. seen or read or whatever. But I didn't have a problem with Tom Cruise as Lestat. And I didn't, okay, so... I love Queen of the Damned because I think the movie's great. I think Aaliyah is mm-hmm. amazing. I'm not crazy about Stuart Townsend. Mm. I think he was a much worse choice than Tom Cruise was. Yeah. But that's just me, you know. So Neil Jordan won an Oscar for screenwriting for The Crying Game. Oh, which is oh, a great Oh, yeah, it was, is. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. He was also nominated as director. 
I mean, those are the only two genre films. That and this one are the only two genre films I could find. He's but he's made a number of really good movies. He's a good director mm-hmm. and someone who clearly is not one of those ones. Like I'm too good for horror. Um, so I admire that too. That you know, oh, someone who's willing to get in the trenches with us. Isn't that? Oh, he did Greta too, mm-hmm. which was a recent movie with. Uh... Chloe Grace Moretz and Micah Monroe. Anyway, which is a a drama mystery thriller, according Mm. to IMDb. When they don't want to call it horror. Right. Mm -hmm. Mystery thriller. Oh, it's horror. Silence of the Lambs. It's not horror. It's a mystery thriller about a guy who likes to skin people. uh, Yeah. And eat them. Yeah, sure. Where's the horror, Um, man? What is that one? Isn't that High Spirit? Isn't that Company of Wolves? Angel. Oh, no. That's not the angel I'm thinking of, is it? No. Nope, it's not. Nope. All right. <laughs> not that He angel. apparently likes Stephen Reed, too. Oh, yeah. Because he did a bunch of his movies. Uh, all right. And then uh, somewhere on the notes, I saw that Angela Carter's, uh, the actual book was called The Bloody Chamber, the collection. Um, but there was also a radio adaptation, which is much closer to what this movie ends up being, which makes sense. Sure. I mean, um, a book is not a movie and a short story is even less of a movie. So you, know, mm-hmm. you gotta. All right. So Sarah Patterson, who, if I remember right, she was, she was very sweet and innocent looking. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. She was able to deliver lines. Innocent lines in obviously not so innocent situations, <laughs> and I bought them. You know, mm-hmm. uh, but she I did really good, and I thought she did yep. a great job. I yeah. didn't have a problem with any of the acting, mm-hmm. really. I no, thought, no, I liked it all. I thought she, I thought she was older than her character, but actually, no, she was the exact. I think she was about the age of the character. It's just that she has a, a presence, a much more mm-hmm. mature presence than most actors of that age so she's she's quite good um i don't know off the top of my head what else she's done it's imdb only has four credits but Hmm. they span from 1984 to 2007 so she's very selective of what she does Uh, apparently or maybe Um, she does theater that's the other thing we look at these people and there's these huge gaps and it could be that they're doing something Mm -hmm. more rewarding but less she did the canon movie uh, Snow White. Maybe she just likes fairy tales. <laughs> yeah. uh. I'm trying to see if it says when she retired from the big screen and settled down. Um, but returned to acting for two small roles in films released in 2002 and 2007. So she did those two roles right at the beginning, Snow White and Company of Rule. Is that the oh. Snow White with uh, Sigourney Weaver? Or is it a different? Uh, um, that might. It might be. It might be. It was shot in. Uh, let's see. I don't recognize any of the. Because that was a good. Here. That was a good movie. Sort of turned Snow White into a horror. Horror film. Uh, mm-hmm. Diana Rigg. Oh. Oh. I love oh. Diana Rigg. Mm-hmm. Is that the same? Let's see, Diana Rigg, Billy Barty. I don't think Billy Barty was in it. I'm the one, uh, it. the one with Sigourney Weaver. In yeah, it. yeah, no, Sigourney. This is a, this is a different one. Okay. So, hmm. um, anyway. Oh, you know, Neil Jordan also did Mona Lisa, which is one of my favorite yeah. drama films. He's he's a good director of good actors who who get good performances out of it, maybe Academy Award nominations. I think Bob Hoskins was in that one. Well, there's so. there's that. Sh- Short little scene where Terrence Stamp is the devil in the yeah. car, and he's yeah. holding this little Neil before Zod. <laughs> yeah. I love yeah. Terrence Stamp. Me yeah. too. I love Terrence ah. Stamp. Yeah, uh, but he's Neil wonderful. Jordan wanted. They were talking to Andy Warhol. Oof! But it was shortly after hmm. he was shot, and he was paranoid oh. about going anywhere. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't blame him. Yeah. Um, Terrence Stamp has a little bit more presence than uh, I agree. Andy I Warhol. So. I think he's yeah. a better devil. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think Andy Warhol probably would have just been looked weird and may not have even had right. any lines. Which, I don't know. That's, yeah. I mean, Terrence Stamp looks like the devil. Yeah, Andy he Warhol looks intense, like a Muppet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's intense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Andy Warhol looks like Beaker from the Muppet Show. <laughs> You know, does. Mm, that I is never a, thought of that, but you thought you say no, that. There are no yep. lies there. Kind of with you. So yeah, she does great, and she looks awesome in that grandma's little red mm-hmm. riding hood that she gets. Mm-hmm. Um, That's what sold me on going to see this movie. Like, like it's a horror retelling of um, um, Little Red Riding Hood. So that's one of the well, and it kind of is, but way it. more. Uh, yeah, there was a lot more involved. to it than just that. Yeah. yeah. But we do throw some of those lines in, although they're somewhat changed. Oh, what big arms you have. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So speaking of Angela Lansbury. Oh, love. boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when I thought when I, Angela Lansbury is like, well, she hasn't really been in any genre type things. But then I look her up. It's like I totally forgot. I, the Sweeney Todd. Sweeney Todd was the play. I don't, I don't know if they was ever filmed yeah. or anything. But she was fantastic in it when i was a kid growing up the ads for that were on tv all the time Mm -hmm. and it's still one of my favorite musicals to watch um i can so see her Hmm. in that that character i wish i'd gotten to see that on broadway bedons and broomsticks Mm -hmm. i loved as a kid i haven't seen it in the longest time but i loved it it's one of those movies i don't know why it hasn't been remade um you know she's in gaslight too She's in Gaslight, which now has become such a thing of, you know, and the picture of Dorian Gray. But she is so good in The Manchurian Candidate, which I, I submit is a science fiction film. Yeah. No one I thinks it's oh, yeah. science fiction. Yeah. But she is absolutely terrifying. And you can, you ignore the fact that she is only like three years older than the actor portraying her supposed son in the movie. Mm-hmm. There's some scenes in there where, uh, man, that movie is that is a killer, great movie, and yeah. her character is one of the great villains, um, just absolutely superb in that. Well, she was just in Glass Onion, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, so, so was last. that her last role, really? yeah? Yeah, so mm-hmm. like that's a genre film, but a lot of these, you know, the classic, uh, the remake uh, or not the remake, but the sequel to Mary Poppins with, mm-hmm. uh, my brain yeah I know. You, I know. you know who i'm trying to think of yeah and of course, of course oh yeah have... yeah it mar- uh oh my god the one that's there married to john krasinski or yeah yeah right ah. bunch uh bunch. oh yeah emily blunt emily. thank blunt. you it. It hurts. Uh, i know i was like I you were you were close though but when you said bunch that's i was a, like yeah that's a yeah. b word with a mm-hmm. u and an n in there but i'm not coming up with the right one yeah. i can tell they're not right I i'll just, tell you uh, what like uh, you can tell we're americans because we're like john krasinski and then over there they'd be like emily blunt is married to who who's yeah. that like yeah. <laughs> uh nanny mcphee yeah um, yeah mm-hmm. yeah a lot of uh, you know well-known but of course, stuff. it's it's murder. She wrote that Americans at least know her as because that mm-hmm. was just such a that show ran forever. Of course. Oh, yeah. interesting. Anyway. Gaslight was her first credit for uh, oh wow a movie anyway. Uh, just she was good at what she did, and she was just a likable. Everyone loved her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't so they said she was anyone. the highest paid person on this movie, and she got thirty five thousand dollars. That's amazing. That's a low budget movie. If you could and. She also didn't have to audition. They just of decided, course, this like, is who I want. I went, Let's ask her. Listen. And she couldn't believe that. Why isn't Amicus or Hammer doing this? You know. And yeah, she would have so, been great. Like, I could <laughs> totally see her in some of those roles. But yeah, if you listen, if you're only offering someone of her quality thirty five thousand dollars to be in a movie, no, you do not audition her. I think mm-hmm. we all. Right. She did exactly what you expected her to do in this movie, playing that role that she could do in her sleep. I know people are always like, oh, they didn't even have to audition for the role. I was like, well, I don't think that that's necessary all the yeah. time. I mean, come yeah, on. Right. Like, if you've seen what someone's been in, I think uh, you, if, you, yeah. if the role, you yeah. know, you know what you're going to get. It's like, yeah, and she delivered. Are, <laughs> I mean, I mean, some obvious. roles feel like Dame they were written for the person. Yeah, it's right. like, what? Yeah. She can handle a old granny versus a werewolf. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like when when they put Terrence Stamp in, the, in one of my favorite crime movies, The Limey, 
it's oh, like yes. not only did he not yeah. have to audition for that role i'm pretty sure they wrote the role you know can for you write me a <laughs> stamp yeah movie? that's sure. probably and, true and there it it's is. Like he, yeah. yeah it's like he was born for that one yeah mm. um so what was the deal so tell me about this I, I okay it's a fantasy it's a fairy tale okay so mm. i know what you're going explanation, here explanation but when her head gets lopped off why is it like ceramic or something it breaks into a it's shell. a dream Okay. Is yeah. Well, right I don't there? know. It could be about losing her beauty, her getting older and lose after your innocent. Mm. After you lose your innocence, you're not as youthful yeah. and young and attractive. Okay, I get it. Y'all don't get it because y'all no, are yes, women. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, this no, is, no, this, no, no, no. I get it because y'all are actually not bad guys <laughs> I, I okay like no, that's some of it like you, you know you. and i get it i that's why i'm like i get explaining it because no i like the there's this whole if y'all haven't like if y'all don't get on like there's this whole insult thing where literally guys get on there and make all these things that say once a woman is 25 she's worthless literally it's, worthless it's like yeah. yeah no like it's bad like there's a ton of and i I know that that's excessive, and I think the movie is also excessive. It's like over the top with it, but I think that is what the reference well, this is, is there. Like and, she and cracked, like like once, it was like a yeah. Oh, oh yeah. okay, correct. Once you hit that age, that Leonardo DiCaprio won't date you anymore. It's all over. Yeah. Uh, see, I took well, it differently. I, I thought of it as this was like the little girl's view, you know, point of view of her grandmother being killed. And instead of the gore and everything that we see with the other maybe kills, that's it too. It that could she be. could, you know, that you wouldn't think of it that way. It's too horrible thing to contemplate. So it was more like a almost a symbolic. Uh, oh, that could know, be too. Kind of. I death. mean, it could. I felt like it was uh, a symbol of the little girl no longer has the protection of her parents or her grandparents. Now she has to become a woman and take care of her own thing. Yeah. And um, so no, oh, that could be like a doll, like oh, like oh yeah, mm. like the doll breaking. Yeah, yeah that makes yeah. sense because we have all those creepy yeah, dolls. Yeah, that, that could be good too. I, like I, I think me. this one could mean a lot of things. Yeah. You know, I mean, the first thing I thought about was like cracking, and mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. it was yeah. like the egg so, babies. It made no sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's symbolic. It was shocking so. to yeah. me because she's such a major character and such a major actress, and mm -hmm. I was so surprised she didn't come back and anything. That was it. She actually died. He, he killed her. Yeah. Kind yeah, of hardcore. She, she uh well there, so there was wait, there's two either that or she right? didn't want to sit in the makeup chair. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The wolf well, behead. I mean, she was, the, uh, granny behead. And you know they probably would be like, We're not gonna make her sit in that chair. Yeah. <laughs> I would be like I'd be like, No. She's no, a dame. No. We'll figure it out. It's cool. Mm hmm. <laughs> She's freaking Angela Lansbury. She's a That's legend. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she's I don't like, know anyone who doesn't like Angela Lansbury. No, I can't imagine. <laughs> I mean, who didn't? I mean, I have. Okay, granted, I haven't seen that much Murder She Wrote, but I have seen it and I enjoyed it. And I just know her face. I like her voice. She always seems so sweet mm -hmm. and, the and only kind. Time I, you know, the only thing I've ever heard where someone said something snarky about Angela Lansbury was some guy at CBS, some mm -hmm. executive, and he was entertaining people at the get together the big yearly get together and was joking about how like you know we have to we have to start making younger th things for younger people because like the hottest actress we have on our lineup is angela lansbury and that was supposed to be like a big laugh line and uh, everyone took it badly as well they should and i think this guy eventually see became this part is the, the whole perfect reason thing. for this movie this yeah, is what exactly. i'm saying see exactly. exactly like that's the right. whole like this so, movie was ahead of its time right and right. i think i think the reason why it was made is because a lot of people didn't get it mm -hmm. <laughs> so they took it more at surface value and they didn't realize how it right. really is down on men well that's way before mm. you know this is weird, but it, it, growing up a white male, mm -hmm. maybe it's not weird. Uh, it's, not, <laughs> it's not something I ever thought about. But after I got married, my wife told me stories mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. stuff that had happened to her that was like, yeah. are you kidding me? Yeah. Right. Somebody actually did that or said mm -hmm. that or treated you that way. And now it's all out in the open on social media. The, mm -hmm. the, the number of people that 
uh, say and do stuff like that. It's just astounding. It is. Uh, it's, astounds, it is. Mm -hmm. Whether they're being anonymous or not. You know, and that's it's, why it's sweet that y'all <laughs> don't I understand. Guess. I, well, I can, I can, you know, I can tell, like, you know. Well, psychopaths you, are good at faking it. Though. Oh, uh, oh, my God. Yeah, that too. <laughs> oh, God. I know. But right? I appreciate, I appreciate what you're saying. Uh, oh, no, but y'all. Yeah. She's She knows I'm not that good an actor. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. that's kind of true, though. <laughs> but, <laughs> Bill, totally right. yes, but yeah. Bill, you're not bad. You're not bad. You're good. Actually, yeah. there were some times where I was like, that was good, Bill. You, I think you just oh. need more time. You just need more time. You th every time post, every Bill was the host. Everything Bill was right. hilarious. Yeah, look, yeah. look, if yeah. everything you work on has to be rushed, 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 yeah. there's not really time for that. Yeah. But I totally know that you well, have the time. it takes practice, too. I mean, you mm -hmm. got to do it a lot. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you get a, it's like, unfortunately, around the edges. Yeah. Um, so David Warner. So that they uh, had these kind of nice names that didn't what really is, have big. Is that okay. Freddy Krueger? Crystal, Crystal, yeah. I found this he for was, you. He was originally cast mm -hmm. as Freddy Krueger, and this was the makeup design. He would have been thing. great, though. I, he would have been. That. It's a, certainly mm -hmm. a different look and everything, um, more deformed than burned. Uh, but then he had to drop out uh, for a scheduling conflict. It wasn't mm -hmm. creative differences, and they. And they went with Robert England, and the rest is history. But yeah, but he, I, I he would have been great. He would have. Oh yeah, been he would have been fantastic. Because mm -hmm. um, he's ooh, he's wonderful. he's so good. Look at these things, mm -hmm. and and there's one we'll have to do at some point. Time after time, is was one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. So his Jack the Ripper. What I think is interesting though is, had it not been Robert England, I don't know if the series. I don't know actually if the series would have made it though. And I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. Not that he would have done a bad job. I just don't think the comedy yeah, that they exactly started right. to incorporate would have. I agree. Mm, I agree. Mm, it would have been and a it totally might not have even different Freddy. I know it would. That's because, exact, oh, isn't that Robert, crazy? When Robert you think, England made up added a lot of that. Yep. Yeah. The TV, you know, Welcome the TV to prime Freddy. time. Yeah. And he's a naturally funny guy. And so, yeah, it, I think you're right. Oh, that's God, that's wild to think about, really. Well, right. and we haven't, you don't have the picture up there, but we have done the movie on the 70s, The Omen, in which he. Ooh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Famous, famous uh, very movie. memorable death. And there he is as the bad guy in Time Bandits. He's yeah. wonderful. Evil genius. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Evil genius. <laughs> He's a good actor. Great yeah, actor. What was the, what's the other movie there? Uh, from Beyond the Grave. He was in one of the shorts. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I just didn't remember that. He was the one with the mirror, I think. Yeah, right? yeah. That was and we did that we movie, did that. too. Mm -hmm. I picked that movie, and I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Because Great it's poster. the same director as Motel Hell. Ah, ah that's funny. <laughs> Wow. All right. Well, let's, let's... Somewhere Christopher G. Moore is going. Oh, I know. I know. Something yeah. just happened and I don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just That's true. Okay. Yep. Well, here's some, here's some wolves. <gasps> oh, this is so cute. Oh, I love so that. That top um, picture. That was that my top favorite picture. Series. Is the thing that, that actually that's the thing that discouraged me from renting the movie. I was just really like, it's so sweet. Look at those big tongues. Look Jeez. at those happy boys. Look, they're so oh, and the good. big tongue too. Ah, that was that was something. Those, so all those that scenes with the tongue. Yeah. yeah. They look so. They they're precious. And I I do like the practical effects. Now they are a little dodgy. Um, you know, it's pretty obvious, like that the, the third one down, the fleshy thing that looks like looks like Crow the Robot from Mystery Science Theater. But yeah. I still like it, though. I still like it. I mean, listen, I'd rather have I'd rather have sub, you know, great practical effects than OK CGI. I mean, because I know a lot of work mm -hmm. goes into the practical. Um, but I just love that top thing and that whole sequence just stood out for me as as being really enjoyable and easy I to really understand. liked it now but seeing that picture did not yeah it did <laughs> did not entice you know like me at that age to go to wrote that movie yet. and I don't I'm not familiar enough with wolves to immediately say hey those are just a bunch of German shepherds or whatever they weren't German well, shepherds but whatever breed they were uh, Belgian Close enough. shepherds Belgian, I think is what she yeah if well, a my, pack of them were chasing me yeah. down, I would, I, I'd still run. So, 
I mean, they they could have some wolf in them. Like my one of my friends, she has a wolf. She, but it kind of looks like them, but grayer. Yeah. It's like silvery. Or is it a, is it a pure wolf or a wolf dog I, hybrid? I think it's pure. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and she she named it after like the Vikings, Lagatha. Yeah. It's beautiful, but most I mean, of them they're were okay. Belgian shepherds with their fur dyed. Oh, okay. And then a real wolf is used towards the end of the their movie. Hair? Oh. I mean, I this seems a little wild to me. According to them, they a uh, sniper was required to be on set just in case when they had the real what? wolf. What? I, I, <laughs> well, that's that's always the risk with with any animal. That's that any, that, yeah. Like, but yeah. Has some, I mean, but any animal that has some wildness in it, because domestication takes takes a while. It could be any animal, back, though. Like, could, like yeah. the reality is, there's dogs that turn all the time, oh, yeah. oh, all right the cool. time. Oh, yeah. So I, I don't, I think that's odd that they would do that for. Eh, I don't know. Uh, I the, supposedly, the producing. Uh, producer Stephen Woolley told the sniper, shoot the wolf first, then shoot me. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. my life won't be worth af after the wolf goes after the kid. Yeah. Oh, I think oh it's, that's, it's that's so liability. sweet. That's kind of sweet. It's probably right. a liability thing. I mean, it's true. Anytime you work with animals, it's risky. But if you're, if you're a filmmaker and you actually have a lion on set or a wolf or any animal that is not really domesticated, they may be tame, but that isn't the same as domesticated. Yep. There's always that risk. And you would just be sued to oblivion if something happened. So I can see that. But boy, oh, that's having. I don't know that it would be worth it, like to have them if that's the case. If you're really that concerned, I. Yeah. I don't Maybe. know. Reshoot. Right. That the, the woman that played the wolf girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Danielle Dax. She mm -hmm. was. Uh, like 26. She I mean, look I looked it. at her and thought, oh. She, like, hey, she seemed as young as yeah. the other. Yeah, see, that's where that's where I'm a little disappointed in things. I, I thought that story was going to go somewhere. It went mm -hmm. nowhere. It, it was like a great setup for mm -hmm. for a story, for an arc or something. The wounded and then, wolf. Yeah. yeah, they let her go. And, and yeah, it's like she just went back game. where she came from. So it wasn't really a story. It was more of an anecdote or something. It was something to fill the time so it would be at least an hour and a half feature. <laughs> yeah. But to get another story in there. Well, Angela Lansbury shot this while she was waiting for the go-ahead on Murder, She Wrote from the yeah. pilot. Oh. That's oh. exciting. To film, the waiting to, uh, waiting to film the pilot, anyway. Yeah, and then she ends up on a show where she probably made more per episode oh. than she oh. did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Way more per Oh, episode. definitely. By the end, I'm sure they were just backing up the money truck. Yeah, how long did she, how, was she on this show? Forever? A uh, pretty long time. Mm -hmm. uh, it actually um, kind of said Six or seven just, or more? Wow. 84 to 96. Wow, no, there could That's have been 12 some follow years. Up. Yeah, could have been wow. Follow-up movies or something too. I mean, how they do that sometimes. It's awesome. But that wouldn't surprise me. It seemed like she was on forever. Um, so somebody mentioned. I don't know if I think maybe it was Bill. Uh, the production design mm -hmm. was Anton Furst. Batman. Oh, that name's very familiar. Yeah. It didn't it, didn't he do Batman or something? Yes. Okay. The 1989 and Full yeah. Metal Jacket. Oh, oh wow. yeah. Um, apparently, uh, Francis Ford Coppola was so impressed with this that, or Kubrick, or Kubrick. I'm sorry. Yeah, not not that one. The other one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, one genius is just like another. I mean. But yeah, but, that's that's good. Uh, he died in 1991. Oh, so committing long suicide. What? Yeah. Oh. oh no, he was so good. Hmm. Uh, Boy, he won an, he he won an Oscar for Batman. Mm -hmm. That was sure. Yeah, with, that's, uh, it's Peter gorgeous. Young, yeah. It's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, what a shame. What a, it's such a shame Sad. when people are so talented and yet that's not a guarantee of happiness. Yeah. You don't know what's going on in their lives, huh? Yeah. So, anyway, um, it, it, it is incredible because you're right. I think I, maybe it was Crystal was talking about that because the town, 
Uh, obviously, you, you only see about three little hut things or whatever mm-hmm. it is, but it, it looks far more the way it's done. And it's mm-hmm. very artistic. It's very uh, fairy tale-ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. I like the Hobbit giant mushrooms. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Attack Attack of, a family of ten. Mentango. Attack, yeah. <laughs> Attack of the mushroom wolves. Now, there's, there's one that hasn't mm. been done yet. Yeah. Uh, all right. Mm. Um, anything else we need to talk about here? Uh, hmm. Comment things you wanted to say that we haven't said. Oh, you know, the, this is one of those ones where listening to Crystal talk about it makes me. I may watch. The, I will watch this again at some point in the future, and with maybe despite, less, maybe less. Despite what Crystal eyes. says, I will never watch this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did like the parts where they were talking about how the uh, some of the well, like what was the last line of that uh, poem they say on the uh, something credit, something, something about a uh, man as sweet uh, as a tooth or something yeah. yeah something like that yeah um and then the the stuff they talked about uh, the stuff that Granny would say about you know sometimes the, the wolf's on the inside or sometimes. Right. I've got, the, I've got the, the uh, inside and... I've got the quote here. It says, "Little girl, this seems to say, never stop upon your way. Never trust a stranger friend. No one knows how it will end. As you're so pretty, so be wise. Wolves may lurk in every guise. Now is then, tis simple truth. Sweetest tongue has sharpest tooth. That is a that is a great line. It's yeah. it's, a, it's very true. Too. Sweetest tongue has sharpest <laughs> tooth is actually Gigi, a Gigi. brilliant line. Mm-hmm. Goosebumps there. Mm-hmm. Even if a, when a man says his prayers at night. That's ooh, <laughs> ooh, mm. spoopy. Evil. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, we do have some feedback. Yay. Yeah, but do. Okay, um, so we got a two parter hmm. from uh Wes Diorio. Uh, the first one is on, let's see, no, there's a two-parter in that. And then we have another one on Nightmare on Elm Street. So let's go with, uh, okay. uh, Bill, you want to read the changeling thing? Okay. Let's see. Okay. This is from Wesley DiOrio. And he thought he thankfully actually spelled this out phonetically. Thank you. Yes. I see yes. that. He does it. It's like. It's like really appreciate that. Like, That's a cool name. <laughs> After hearing us mangle so many yeah. people's names, yes. he didn't want it to happen to him. Hi, Gru Crew. Wow, Hi. you guys are pumping out the episodes. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I want I wanted to reply to episode number 224, Elm Street 3, but you were so quick to put out another episode before I could. So this mm-hmm. is my two-part reply to episode 225, The Changeling. During the listener feedback portion, Jeff sent out the bat signal to the listener who helped him with the dropper episode from the TV show The Man and the Challenge from 1959. That's me, Wes Diario. Um, that's well, so Part two is in reply to the bat signal. Part one is my brief reply to the changeling. I'll reply to Elm Street 3 in a separate email. Email part one. You were right when you said this movie is for people who don't like horror movies. My wife is in this category. She definitely does not like the more extreme or gory horror movies. We watched The Changeling together and both enjoyed it. George C. Sky is incredible in this role. Can I put a plug in for next Christmas and the DOH 1980s oh, crew yeah. and review the made-for-TV movie A Christmas Carol from 1983 with Scott S. Scrooge? Yeah. I is. would love. Yes. I haven't seen that yeah. ever. That's, a, that's yeah. actually a great it's a pick great for us. great one. We've done a ton of TV movies on the 70s, but I don't think we've done any on uh, And 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 the Christmas 80s. Carol is is such a good choice, but I wouldn't have thought of it. It's, it's I know, and it is yeah. a horror for yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, come on. It has ghosts and the ghost of Christmas yet to come is frightening for 6-year-old me. It's frightening for 62-year-old me who was watching the year it debuted. Now for part 2. During the feedback that the feedback portion Listener Andy L. mentioned an episode of the NBC show Tomorrow, which aired from 1973 to 1981 with host Tom Snyder, interviewing Cronenberg, Cossarelli, and who Andy thought was Joe Dante or Joe Landis discussing the explicit nature of gore in modern horror films. Crystal and Bill said they'd like to see this interview. After doing extensive research into the archives of Tomorrow, man, thanks, as well as any interviews with Tom Snyder and Cronenberg, I found that no such interview exists. However, Tom Snyder did interview 
Coscarelli and George Romero on The Tomorrow Show on July 3rd, 1979, after Phantasm was released. Snyder specifically asked the question about gore and violence and horror, so perhaps this is the interview listener Andy L. mentioned. This interview is archived, but only for Apple Plus TV subscribers due to the copyright owned by Coscarelli's Silver Sphere Productions. I assume this is in reference to the Silver Spheres and the Phantasm series. Oh, yeah. But if you don't have access to Apple TV, portions of this interview are also available on the Criterion 909 release of Romero's Night of the Living Dead. Jeff, do you own this? I'm guessing the answer is yes. Uh, oh I do, God. but I, I, I think that. Chad does too. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. yeah. I, and I haven't watched all those, so I got I to go look yeah, at Yeah, they're, so, they're so packed. It's great. Thank While you so researching much. this information, I did come across an interesting roundtable interview from 1982 with Cronenberg, Carpenter, and Landis shortly before the release of Carpenter's The Thing. The interview was conducted by Mick Garris. Oh, that's good, too. A Google search for fear on film will easily find this result. Is is it possible that listener Andy L. conflated the Tom Snyder interview with this one? Mm -hmm. One of the many interesting comments from this roundtable discussion occurs when the directors are discussing how their movies are often rated X when first shown to the MPAA and what cuts are necessary to make it an R rating in the U.S. and Canada. Cronenberg offers the idea of a rating system that could be between PG and R, maybe something for 13 and 14 year olds. It was only a couple years later that the MPA introduced the PG 13 rating with Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. That's awesome. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Thank you again for another great episode. Ciao for now. West, West Dior. Wow. That was, man, that's above Dale and beyond Dior. the Call of Duty, sir. It is. Yeah, <laughs> for real. And I said that too. And I can't remember if I remember if I, called him out by name or not or if i just said we i don't if, think you if, did i think if the guy if the guy who's listening who uh found yeah. the, the logs dropping out of the trunk episode is here <laughs> <laughs> well this guy's a gift he's, he's got some yeah. mad research skills mm-hmm. and he actually makes really nice complete yeah. good <laughs> excellent Wes. we really appreciate it and, thank you so not, much we're not done with Wes yet uh, oh no crystal you want to or no wait yes. Chad picked Nightmare okay. on Street, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Wes Diorio says for Nightmare on Elm Street 3, thank you for reviewing Dream Warriors. This is a very important moment in my horror movie fandom history. It was my first unedited horror movie during the rental movie boom of the mid-1980s. Not having cable, my horror watching ex- experience was crafted by what the censors of broadcast TV deemed to be acceptable. I was 10 years old in 1987 and a lifelong horror fan, but in that year became Mm. aware of Fangoria magazine. Dream Warriors was omnipresent in Fangoria during this time. It was then that I began to realize the importance of the special effects team as much as the actors. Although we had marvelous makeup effects prior to the 80s, it was in the 1980s in which the special effects team became as important as the actors and directors. Very Mm -hmm. true for me, too. An extra special thank you to guest reviewer Ralph. Ralph! For Mm -hmm. his insights and the inside views to the magic it takes to make these movies so special. It does not ruin the movie to see and hear how the magic was created. If anything, we as viewers and outsiders appreciate it more after hearing how much planning and work goes into only a few frames of cinematic wonder. And not just Ralph. <laughs> what? Oh, shit. <laughs> it takes we a love team. You, Ralph. We love, you. We love Ralph. We yeah. love him. We love him. Yeah. It, it, takes, it takes a team to create even a fleeting moment, a second of this magic. Let's recognize all the men and women and Ralph who make it happen. Huh. While Elm Street Part 1 is still my favorite of the series, Elm Street 3 is the one I've watched most often. For me, the only truly scary scene is the welcome to prime time, bitch, (laughs) aftermath when the actor is found hanging from the TV. I don't know why that final shot of the actor hanging from the TV is more frightening than any others, but it has stuck with me over the years. And that was creepy looking Mm -hmm. in the background with her head just smashed in and, and just hanging there. It was that was a creepy scene. In discussing stop motion, which happened frequently in this episode as a result of the Freddie marionette and the skeletons fighting John Saxon, I would like to say this. The future generations love stop motion. Mm -hmm. That's good. I recently watched the original King Kong with my 10-year-old daughter, who has been showing an interest in horror. Mm -hmm. 
her review was, there was so much action, I was never bored. Oh, so cute. <laughs> uh, now she wants mm. to be a special effects artist. Yay! Excellent. Yeah, you go, you go. So there you go, Bill Mulligan. There is hope for the younger generation. <laughs> mm -hmm. what a, see, that's a good parent right there. Yeah. 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 Raise them right. <laughs> that's right. One final note. Crystal, this was your most animated and passionate episode. As yeah. much as I love this movie, I loved it even more listening to you talk about it. You always bring an honest and interesting perspective to the DOH and gruesome magazine reviews. But this was 100%. your best episode yet. Yay! Thank hey, you. Kudos. That's so nice. Awesome, awesome. awesome. We Ciao all feel the now. same way. From all Thank of you, us. Wesley. Wes Oreo. Oh, should we call you Wesley or Wes? Because he did say Wesley, but here he says Wes. Uh, Wesley was from his, uh, you know, uh, attached to his email address when it comes so to the... So Wes. You go by Wes. Wes. So he signs Wes. Yeah. Yeah, Wesley is what he hears when he's in trouble. Just yeah, like now, if I hear is, William, I run. Does anyone else want some Oreos right now? Yeah, I, I, wanna, I think we should call him the Oreo. That'll give us a good excuse to go munch on Oreos. I'm now. like, oh, it's time, I want double stuff. And we, we have one <laughs> last short comment. Uh, Crystal, uh, if you could take this one from the changeling. Yes, gory bits. <laughs> Cats rule. And so does the changeling. You hear that, kids? They do, Cats right? Rule. <laughs> yeah, they do. I have dogs, but I would totally have one of those things if I could afford them. <laughs> All right. right. Thanks, Gory Bits. Yeah, yeah thanks. Thank you. Thanks, thanks everybody. Gory Bits, and thanks, Wes. Gory Bits is awesome. Have you, do y'all, have y'all checked out like his stuff? Like he, he has like tons of like, he has a YouTube and does oh, okay. cool. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Like, Check them out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, please send feedback. We love feedback. Yes, and God, this is like have, really we have great. The best yeah. List Wait a second. Great stuff, Wes. Why don't we have anything from Jerry? I, well, he's been you know not he's under the weather very lately. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. And also, you know, he did make a comment. I didn't, I didn't dig in the Facebook stuff. He did make a comment oh, okay. about the changeling. So. I'll pull okay. that up for uh, Sorry, next Jerry. Episode. There's also times um, where Jerry gets his job uh, just like totally so busy. Stumped. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. it's crazy. Right. All right. Um, all right. So, yeah, that's it for this episode. But every two weeks, we focus on a specific film between 1980 and 1989. Next up, we tackle one chosen by Crystal. What Vampire's are you doing? Kiss. From, you know, with Nicolas Cage. And, it, yeah. Who? Yeah. Nicholas Cage. Hold on, let me uh, exercise my fast forward button finger. Here. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Oh, he's Not a wonderful. Fan. I love Nicholas Cage. Well, no, nah, honestly, gonna... I've never seen Vampire's Kids. You haven't? Okay, no. so I think. Okay, I think it's super weird. I think you'll like it. With a super weird Nicholas, Nicholas, Nicholas Cage yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah. Really. No, but also, and, and, and was um, it Jessica Biel? Uh, Jess Jennifer Biel. Jennifer, uh, I keep, uh, Maria I, Conchita. Alonso, yeah, Jennifer Biel. Yeah, Maria Conchita. Alonso. Yeah, uh, this is a good one, guys. Like yeah. it's fun. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's it's funny. Nicholas Andrew. surrounded by women. Woof. Okay, there we go. Yep. Um, and I don't know. Isn't the isn't Renfield due out here pretty soon, or is that later this yeah, year? Yeah, I think that's pretty coming soon. Out I've been soon. seeing the ads, and the ads look crazy. Good. I can't wait. Oh my um, god, he's it looks so funny. All right, so yeah, we'll look forward to that. And that right now, you can stream that on Tubi, Canopy, or Pluto TV, or uh, most of the pay per view sources, you know, like Amazon and that kind of stuff. Uh, yes, anyway, yes. be sure to join us for that one. Yes. And uh, plenty of ways to stay in touch. So leave us comments on the YouTube page. Send us emails to feedback at gruesomemagazine.com. Check out our Facebook page. Comment on the uh, uh, website, what, whatever trips your trigger. But we love comments. Trips so, your trigger? Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, new. Trips your uh, trigger. Whatever cocks your hammer. Oh, is that is that real? I want that one too. Wow. I'll write this down. I like I like that one. <laughs> I don't know. I just made that up. Uh, it works for me. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, folks, catch us again here in two weeks for another great horror film of the 1980s. As only decades of horror can do it. Say good night. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Love you. 
Release! <laughs>